Working in the construction industry, we face numerous safety and health hazards every single day. One that isn't that obvious, but is one of the most dangerous, is electrocution from overhead power lines. This is especially true when you or your coworker are operating heavy equipment such as a backhoe, dump truck, or crane near overhead energized power lines. When it comes to construction, high reaching heavy equipment will almost always be on your side. So this information that you're about to learn is critical for you, whether you operate heavy equipment or not. Hi, I'm Sergio with ANA Safety, and in this video, we will cover requirements and safe work practices for operating heavy equipment near overhead power lines. If you or your crew will be operating high reaching heavy equipment near overhead power lines, there are certain precautions and procedures that you must be followed before beginning work. It all starts with identifying the work zone. This can be done by either setting boundaries such as flags or a device such as a range limit device and prohibiting the operator from operating the equipment past those boundaries or defining the work zone as the area 360 degrees around the equipment up to the equipment's maximum working radius. Keep in mind that this usually applies to a piece of equipment that is mainly stationary, such as a crane. Once we have identified the work zone, now we must determine if any part of the equipment, load line or load, including rigging and lifting accessories, could get closer than 20 feet to a power line if operated up to the equipment's maximum working radius in the work zone. If so, the employer must keep their operator and other standby workers safe through one or more of the following options. The first option is to de-energize and visibly ground the power line in the work zone. Be sure to receive confirmation from the utility owner or operator that the power line has been de-energized and visibly grounded before resuming work. The second option is to establish and maintain a 20 20 foot clearance from the power line at all times. Ensure that no part of the equipment, load line, or load, remember, that includes rigging and lifting accessories. Getting closer than 20 feet to the power line by implementing an effective measure such as erecting an elevated warning line or barricade. And the third option is to use the table, which is now being shown on the screen, to determine the minimum approach distance. Keep in mind, however, this process includes verifying the power line's voltage from the utility company. Once you've determined the minimum approach distance, ensure that there is no part of the equipment, load line, or load gets closer than 20 feet to the line than that distance. Once again, this must be done by implementing an effective control measure. And real quick, if you could do me the favor and subscribe, we're on the road to 10 million subscribers and we'd love for you guys to go on that journey with us. And now back to the video. Ultimately, to safely work and operate equipment around overhead power lines, some pre-planning must take place before work begins to ensure safe working distance have been established. Every worker involved understands the hazards and you have the necessary tools, equipment, and the material to implement the necessary control measures. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of what goes into minimizing the risk of striking an overhead power line with high reaching heavy equipment, including conducting a pre-shift assessment and the options that you may implement to work and operate equipment safely near overhead power lines. Although following these may minimize the risk of accidentally striking overhead power lines, contact with power lines may still occur. It's for that reason that de-energizing and visibly grounding power lines is a preferred option to eliminate the hazard altogether. If you enjoyed the video, please Please hit that thumbs up to get this video out to more people and help them work and operate heavy equipment safely near overhead power lines. We'd also love from here for you guys in the comments. How often do you deal with overhead power lines in your scope of work? Are there hazards you encounter daily? Be sure to also follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.